Welcome to the session number six of our book club. It's always a little bit sad to say goodbye. Tomorrow is going to be our last day. But um, remember that I'm going to do another one, and it's going to be America Goes Vegan. I think you will love this book. If you're not familiar with Glenn Mercer, he is... Uh, very talented writer. I don't know the dates yet, but soon this week I'll send you all an email with the dates. Um, I will probably, every time I do a book club, I will probably change the time so to give everybody, since I have people who sign up from all different time zones, and I'll um, change the time so that it's not. Uh, so that it's convenient for some sometimes and for others other times. Anyway, the replay is always available, so that's good. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay, so while we while I wait like one more minute until everybody logs in, I want to show you this. Let me do a little bit of self-promoting since this is the only thing really that I charge for that allows me to do three things like the book club. Let me show you the, um, oh gosh, okay, let me get to this page. Okay, that's the, that is the, my website. This is the website that uh, Dr. Ponyman and myself, um, created a few years ago. Dr. Ponyman is an MD who works in New York and is a wonderful whole food plant-based doctor. And he and I um, wanted to do a website that would be um, bilingual. So this website is in English and it's also in Spanish. So if you know of anybody who um, speaks Spanish, um, let's see, um, and needs the information, you can send them this way. Plantemus came about because the name of the website is plants because it's a plant-based way of eating. And then MUS is for music. And we wanted to do something where we combine um, eating, plant-based eating and music. And because many times when I do webinars and this time I haven't done it. I um, I also play the piano for you, so I give you a little mini concert. But um, so that's why it's open, Plantemus. And uh, let's see here. Let me try to. Okay. All right. So, but I do want to show you this here. When you go to webinars, you will find a lot of free videos. I don't know if you're aware of this, but. Take advantage of these. I have a cooking with Gustavo episode six with some really good recipes. And um, I, I always go with simple uh, meal ideas and recipes. And there, was, there are quite a few there. And then when you go to live workshops, you will you get the information about my, I don't want to toot my own horn, <laughs> but this program has turned out to be a really good program. I um, It was an experiment at first, and it has turned out to be, uh, I mean, it's helped so many people that just couldn't get it right for one or another reason. And until they saw how you can make this simple and how you, if you know exactly what to do and how to do it, then you're going to stay on track. And that's the main point of this program is showing you how you can make simple meals, simple, 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 simple meals. And I log in three times a day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We have a great time, um, you know, making these meals and um, supporting ourselves with comments and strategies. And uh, it's great that the next one starts on September 17th. And um, you can choose your own uh, level of pricing here. And if for some reason, you really want to do this and um, and 
you can't for financial reasons contact me and, and we'll make it work because I really and honestly tell you that I want to help. It's uh, it's easy. Uh, it really being whole food plant based is the easiest of the styles of eating. It's very sustainable. You all can do it, and, and you can do this. You just need. Uh, you just need to know exactly how to do it and what to do. Okay, uh, so uh, let's see here. We are in um, chapter. Yesterday we did. I did the uh, much for you. Okay, how much we love, okay. All right, so I am on page 96, and I wanted to try salad dressing, because that is one of the topics and issues that keep coming up. Also, when I do um, personal coaching, if you ever want a coaching session with me, I can... Um, also help a lot in that area. But this is one of the issues that comes up often. It's like, well, I don't eat salad because I can't find the salad dressing that I like and this and that. Anyway, um, I uh, relate to that because it's taken me a while to find what I like. And of course, um, salad dressings that have avocado in it, nuts, of course, they're going to taste good because we're wired to love fat. And um, some of us uh, can uh, process that better. Our bodies mm, don't gain weight or our, our genetics are different. In my case, um, I only have to look at something that is high fat and I, may, and I start gaining weight without eating it. So I have to be careful. I just don't use uh, salad dressings unless it's on a very occasion, you know, every now and then. Um, I try not to use uh, walnuts or cashews or things for salad dressing. So this one on page 96 looked very, it looked good, but I didn't know if it, how it was going to taste. Uh, of course, I know that Anne and Jane are amazing cooks. So I kind of knew. But, but there's always a personal, a personal, uh, you know, factor there. Sometimes you just don't like something. So I decided to make that. And um, also, if you go to page 100, you will see a salad dressing that is called In the Pink. It's an intriguing title. And of course, it's based on a beef, okay? So it, it is a very pink or red dressing. And then the other one I wanted to do was on page 97, the three to one. Three to one, it's, um, it's very simple. So I ended up making the one on page 96 and the one on page 100 because I ran out of mustard and I couldn't do the three to one, but we'll talk about it. So let me show you first. And then, um, then I have other things I, I want to um, share with you. Okay. Uh... Does it taste like beets? Well, yes. I mean, yes, uh, but um, it's not overpowering because the, you have the garlic, then you have the zest of the lemon that gives it a kick to it, and then you have two or three tablespoons of lemon juice, and, um, and then the lemon balsamic. So there's a lot of lemon uh, flavor. You have lemon juice, lemon zest, I put lemon balsamic, then you have the orange juice, so you have lemon 
and orange. So there's some, it's quite um, citric. And, um, but you, you do have, uh, you, you do taste a little bit the, the beads. Um, I, I really should have done a double batch of, or of, all, of both of this, especially Anne and Essie's favorite. I could have quadrupled that because I can see how the, 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 the uh, I've already used most of it in a salad that I had at lunch. So, um, yeah, I definitely recommend these. And then the three to one, which is very simple because it's three tablespoons of one thing, two tablespoons of another thing, and then one. So it's three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. Choose the balsamic vinegar of your, you know, preference. Two tablespoons of mustard. In my case, I like, um, I don't like strong uh, mustard. So um, I usually choose uh, uh, one that is more gentle and that, and, uh, but I like Dijon. And then one tablespoon uh, maple syrup. I usually um, substitute the, the maple syrup um, with uh, either an orange uh, juice or with the um, peach juice from a can of peaches, but but juice, not not syrup. Okay, you've got to get one of those cans that comes with just the, the fruit juice. So that's the three to one. Then, so that's a liquid. You shake that, and that's it. It's it's a very good, simple but very good dressing. If you um, want it to be a creamy dressing, all you have to do is add two to three tablespoons of hummus and shake it again, and uh, then you get a creamy uh, dressing. Okay, let's see. The other dressings, to me, um, like I said, I try whenever possible I add to, I, I try to avoid using uh, added uh, fat. So like, and if I eat fat, then I like, I would eat it in its whole food form. That's one of the basics of this, what we are doing. That's why we call it whole food plant-based. I think it, most people at, that, that have trouble and they fall off the wagon and they gain weight and then they kind of get lost in the jungle is because they forgot this one key word and that is whole, W-H-O-L-E, whole. <clears throat> Eating food whole. So if I eat fat, even if it's good fat, instead of uh, blending uh, walnuts or pecans or something like that in the dressing, I would just rather eat it and, and chew it with, with the fiber and the water intact in the more, if it's avocado, I'd rather also eat it whole, or if it's um, olive, obviously an olive and not olive oil. So remember that uh, the word whole is a, is a key ingredient for this way of eating to work. Once we start processing food too much, um, the calor the more we process food you know the, the the higher the calorie level goes up and um so what i was going to say is that processing means taking out the fiber or taking out the water or in the worst case taking out both things and um and that's when we get in trouble Okay, so um, I really try to uh, teach everybody uh, that I coach or that signs up for the for the program uh, ways to eat whole food and make it delicious, much like like the recipes here. Okay, so another thing I enjoy eating is salsa because salsa um, will make almost anything taste better. You can put salsa on <laughs> a baked potato, salsa on a baked sweet potato. Um, you can put salsa on rice and beans. You can 
I mean, you can use salsa as a, as a spread instead of mayonnaise. Uh, you can use, uh, I mean, I don't know. I just, there, there are so many ways. And so here on page 102, you have a nice picture, okay, of uh, mango salsa, red radish, grape salsa, peach salsa, Brian's fresh salsa, watermelon salsa, and then in the following pages, you have the recipes, okay? So uh, give it a, a try, and those are really delicious. On page 107, you have guacamole, which um, is a, uh, as you all know, guacamole is addictive, you know? Who can eat a teaspoon of guacamole? <laughs> I don't, I haven't met one yet, a person. So yeah, of course, if I'm gonna eat guacamole every now and then, but if I make it and I have it every day, at least for me, it uh, it means that I'm going to gain weight. All right. Any questions before I I just want to go through a few more pages and give you some ideas. But um, since we're doing this on Zoom, which allows us to interact, uh, if you want to comment or ask questions. Feel free to interrupt me. This is an informal setting here. Stavo? Yes. May I make a comment? Um, I just, I want to tell you about um, not just this book club reading, but all of the book clubs that you've done. Um, Lynn and I realized this when um, today, that whenever you do these book clubs, now this book is like a part of what we talk about every day and we've been going through it and and okay now what recipes are we going to make and then you know the lemon oatmeal and then and then the other things the marinara that you talked about yesterday and i just want you to know that you know whether we're doing one of dr barnard's book to get books together or this one and now glenn mercer coming up it becomes a part of our conversation you know throughout the entire time that we're doing this together so I just wanted to really just thank you. And we've been making things. Yesterday we made the, or Friday, made the twice baked potatoes in here. And it's, you've revived this book for us. You know, it's now become a part of our, you know, of what we've been doing. So thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, of course, yeah. it makes me happy to, to know that it helps because honestly, being here alone and uh, I'm sometimes, you know, you just wonder, um, it's just really helping. Uh, so, yeah, thank you for letting me know that, that it helps. Uh, oh, it certainly is. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Well, good, good. Um, so one of the things that I, I we all, we all have to figure out what works for each one of us. Don't, don't believe what some maybe some youtubers or some uh, you know social media supposedly experts say uh, that a specific program or, or a specific thing works because there really isn't a one size fits all our bodies are all different so i always say we have to tailor the whole food plant based way of eating to your lifestyle, to your cultural background, to, uh, to, uh, to, to you. And um, so for me, one, uh, one of the things that is in, in, my, in my culture, in my, in my background in, from growing up is, um, is bread. And I have struggled with this because there are whole food plant-based groups that are really strict about not eating bread. And uh, I have tried that and I have been able to do that for sometimes for long periods of times, but eventually, and not long ago, recently, I have uh, come to the understanding, to the realization that there is something about food 
it's not just food. Uh, it, it's also pleasure. And um, I have to, every, I mean, not every day, but once or twice a week, if, I, if it really makes me happy to have uh, two pieces of whole wheat uh, bread toasted, and I can manage that, okay? Because if, it's, if it is a strong addiction and I start with two pieces and then I eat a whole loaf, then that wouldn't work. But if I can manage that and I can see that my weight is not affected by it, then uh, that's how I make it work. And I see now, I knew that the Esselsteins eat bread, but I mean, I kind of forgot how, you know, by, but by reading the book, I realized, wow, there are a lot of sandwiches here and a lot of ways where they eat some bread. But of course the bread is, you have this, thin bread and it's loaded with vegetables on top and you know an oil-free hummus um, so you really what you're eating is you're eating your vegetables with some bread and in my case I know that I cannot do that every day um, bread is what we call a dry starch and dry starch because it doesn't have water the less water, the more calories. So I can't do it. I have a tendency to gain weight. So I have to had to figure out. Maybe for some of you, bread is not a problem, but maybe it's an issue uh, to eat nuts and seeds or something else. So um, I saw here a um, on page 115, a sandwich that looks, I like to do things that look different, you know, and uh, uh, unusual. This sandwich has slices of apples and um, it looks really, I don't know if you have the book, it's this, but if you don't have it yet, that's what it looks like. And um, uh, I, at some point I will try it. It has two slices of whole uh, grain, 100% whole grain bread toasted, then one or two green onions chopped, uh, a fourth of a cup of roughly chopped cilantro or parsley, two radishes or one watermelon radish sliced thinly, and um, one or two tablespoons of mustard, your favorite. And then you also have slices of cucumber and uh, slices of apple. And so, and then there's broccoli sprouts and no salt, lemon pepper. It looks uh, very healthy and very, very good. So that would be uh, for one of the things that I could eat. For example, I couldn't, I, I'm not gonna do this one because bagels are things that I can't control. Uh, I love bagels. And so if I eat um, one bagel, if I am in a store, I don't have one obviously in my house, then I would go back and get another. And then I would go back and get another. So unfortunately, that's uh, one of those things that I just don't. I don't tempt myself. Um let me see another one that looks very good is this one. And that is on page 126. And um, this is summer corn slab open, uh, slab open faced sandwich. And it's simple. I'm always looking for simple meals um, because I think that that is a crucial element for success. So two slices of, um, you know, some kind of 100% whole wheat bread and then some hummus and um, two green onions chopped. And uh, then he has some chopped purple cabbage and one ear cooked corn on the cob. Okay, and uh, a cup of cooked kale or greens of your choice, and then two tablespoons of uh, lime juice and four cherry tomatoes, and uh, you get something like that. 
Today, I have that. Today, Sunday is the day. Sunday is the day that I have allowed myself to have toast. And so I toasted two pieces of bread. I put oil-free hummus. Then I put a lot, like this much of um, steamed uh, spinach with uh, sliced cherry tomatoes. And then I also put a few leaves of arugula and some balsamic vinegar. And it was delicious. Okay, so that uh, it's a little experiment that I'm running this month. What I do is uh, one, one week per month, I do myself what I call a, a detox and reset week. When I go back to the most simple way of eating. And that week, I don't have any bread um, or anything that is dry starch or anything that is more processed. It's all really whole food, plant-based. And I do, at the end of the seven days, I do a 14, 16-hour fast, which it, it may sound like a lot, but in most of it, it happens while you're sleeping. It's just delaying the breakfast a little bit. And it is a wonderful way to reset and, um, and clean your taste buds. I want to um, mention also for those of you who are busy, a lot of us have very busy life, um, soups are a great way to have food available at all times because you make a big pot of soup and you eat it for a day or two or maybe even three. And then if you still have any leftover, you freeze it. And so um, it's just uh, very convenient, very convenient. And so on page, um, this page is 137, okay, page 137. You have a soup that is loaded with vegetables. And that means, what does it mean? It means fiber. And what does fiber mean? Fiber means, fiber is the most efficient way to get toxins out of our bodies. You've got to think of fiber as this uh, train with wagons running through your stomach and inside and collecting all the you know waste and toxins and that's what fiber does that's what fiber does and fiber is only in plants but fiber needs to be combined with water okay in just dry fiber it's not gonna run easily through the body and so that's why i always say remember the word whole because only in whole plant-based, you will have both things. You will have fiber and you will have water. And even though it seems like a simple concept, many people forget that. And, and that's how they start to get off the path. So uh, fiber will help you detoxify. Fiber will help you regulate your blood sugar. Fiber will also... Uh, help with weight control because fiber and water creates bulk and it uh, fills us up. We don't eat as much when we eat a lot of fiber and water. So this soup has a lot of vegetables which already have water in them and fiber. Then it has the water that you put in the soup. And then you have the energy because those vegetables are great for many nutrients that we need, but the energy comes from the starch. And you have two powerful starches here. One is farro and one is beans. So I think this is a really good soup to try. And um, don't be shy. I would double this recipe. Even if it's just you, one person, double it and um, and freeze it. Um, it's going to come in handy one of those days that you're busy or even if you're not busy and you 
don't feel like cooking. Another one that I think is worth trying is the one on page 141, which is a carrot, mushroom, and red lentil, okay, chili. And um, these are pretty easy. It, even though it looks like it has a lot of ingredients, a lot of that is um, uh, like lemon juice and, and, and condiments, but really it has uh, onions and garlic, um, onions and garlic, mm, well, the vegetable broth, the lentils, then it has some carrots, chard and mushrooms. Okay, so not too bad. And not too many ingredients to go hunt for. And I think that's another one. Another one that is very energetic. It's going to give you energy and keep you full for a long time. That's what we really want, okay? Be, be, be satisfied for a long time. It's the one on page 143. Big bean, barley, and sweet potato soup. Of course, that has my favorite thing, which is sweet potatoes. Very, very filling. And uh, so this is going to have a little bit of a sweet taste to it because of the sweet potatoes. But again, not too many ingredients and uh, you can make uh, a, ba you know, a batch and freeze it. All right, any questions about soups or salads or salad dressings? I mean, are you, are you um, uh, struggling? with something that maybe maybe I can help with while well, while you think about it let me read your comments here I have ma made all three of those soups and they're very good left out carrots since I don't like cooked carrots okay yeah you know this is the fun part this is what makes this way of eating uh doable is that there are, we eat so many vegetables and so many types of beans and legumes and, uh, and, and, and cereals that if you don't like one thing, it's no big deal. Just leave it out. Or maybe you will put something else that you like in it. It's not like baking. Uh, you know, when we start, when we go into the baking of muffins and cakes and things like that, things... Uh, begin to be more strict because there there are uh, ingredients that need to be put in specific uh, you know amounts. But uh, otherwise, feel free to adapt. Okay, so let's see what is going. I noticed they don't peel their okay, moraine okay. sweet potatoes. Uh, yeah, don't peel them. Uh, uh, sweet potatoes, I don't peel. Um, they, um, what research shows is that most of the nutrition is within like one sixteenth of an inch between the peel and the actual fruit or vegetable. Um, so when you peel it, you, you are really taking out quite a lot of uh, carrots. You, you could wash them really well and don't peel them. Gustavo, last time you mentioned you had a really nice ranch dressing. Wondering what the ingredients are. <laughs> uh, actually, I have that dressing in my YouTube channel. I don't recall all the ingredients to tell you the truth because I haven't made it in I don't know, five, four, five, six months now. I stopped making it. When I noticed that something is addictive, I, I stopped making it. And so that ranch dressing was so good that um, I was, oh, yeah, it helped me because I was eating a lot of salads, but I, I was using too much. So I stopped making it. Not that I won't ever make it, but now that I know that I that is a little problem, I'll just uh, make it every now and then. So if you can't find it, uh, send me an email. My email, I think, well, I think you all have it. It's info at plantemus.com. 
Okay. Or it can also be plantemus at gmail.com. Plantemus is P plant E M U S. Okay. So yeah, that is a very good ranch dressing. Any um let's see any other comments? Okay. Very good. Well, um, tomorrow I will, I I'm want to make something, but I don't know yet what. I love um, cauliflower, and I have a head of cauliflower in the refrigerator. So I would, I'm looking at page 183, cauliflower and broccoli bites, because I make something like that. But maybe I'll do something else as well. So, and then we'll just finish um, tomorrow our book club, talking a, a little bit about bowls. Um, besides soups and stews, I think that uh, knowing how to make um, bowls is um, another way to be very successful at this way of eating. And um, just to, to finish today, I want to tell you that here, uh, this is um, page 217. It says, build your own bowls, okay? Um, you can always just have a base and that base can be rice and beans or it could be lentils and rice, or it could be just beans. So you have a base and then you pile up or put it on the size different things, different vegetables. Another very simple meal, which is not here, but I've done it uh, at Chef AJ's show, is a potato flat, which is very fun, fun, fun to, to do, uh, especially if you have like a, a gathering and you do a potato flat and then you have like a little buffet and everybody puts um, different things on top of the potato pancake. And it's also fun to do because everybody can flatten their own potato, basically it's a baked potato. And then you have like a chopping board or a plate or something and you put it on the potato and you just press hard and it just makes it flat and it fills the whole plate. And then you you put different uh, things on that. So, and, that, and there is a video in about that as well. Well, uh, anything else before we part? <laughs> Any questions, comments? Okay. Very good. I will see you tomorrow, Monday. Have a good evening.